NBC, what's going on? Um, been a little bit, um, been real busy lately. Um, just work and home projects and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, I really felt like making a video uh, the last couple weeks. Um, you know, a lot's happened since then. Uh, I haven't really jumped on any threads, you know, for Steve or anything like that. You know, I've reached out to him a couple times, but, you know, I'm really bad about keeping in contact with people. But, um, seems like Steve has got pretty much one of the best spirited people I've met. I've uh, been blessed to meet him twice, um, go digging with him. And, uh, you know, for all these, all you that are wondering, he is exactly like his videos, just a genuine person, and uh, man, I was feeling for him, you know, when he sent me those first pictures, you know, when I texted him, and what a horrible situation, and he's turning it into, you know, just a, a wonderful thing, you know, and it's just been nice to see the vinyl community coming together and helping him out, and uh, it's really been, you know, nice, nice seeing that, and um, nice that he has another system to keep playing records so anyways uh, Steve if you're watching man I can't even imagine going through something like that and just you keeping your head up like that you know it's really inspiring man so uh, kudos to you and uh, like I said kudos to the VC for you know coming together so anyways uh, I'm trying out different I went back to using the my iPhone microphone instead of the microphone I was using before people said in my last video that it was kind of a, you know, real, you know, soft, so hopefully this is better, um, let me know, um, I'm always trying to make stuff better, but it doesn't always work out, so, uh, this the whole post is gonna, or this whole video is gonna be, um, you know, a lot of record stores have been selling online, um, Instagram, stuff like that, since stores have closed down, and, uh, I've been following Glasshouse Record Store, um, you might have heard of Alex, I don't know if you watched uh, Noble Records podcast he did with him, um, but uh, yeah, so he he runs Glasshouse Records store out in California, Pomona. Um, and funny fact, I actually went to the very first Angels and Airwaves. I don't know if you know who they are, but Blink 182, Tom DeLonge, he started another band, Angels and Airwaves, back in I don't know uh, mid 2000s maybe something like that. And uh, their first show was at the glass house in Pomona so I was actually at that show so that was kind of cool but uh, I didn't even know they had a record store maybe they didn't then but uh, so anyways um, he's been selling records online on Instagram and uh, you know you just kind of comment and you gotta be real quick man he's it's tough um, but uh, I've been blessed with fast fingers I guess because I got quite a few from him this is gonna be the first part I got a second part video because he also started a website so um, these are all from him. Um, just such an eclectic mix. I love buying from him. Um, the prices are usually pretty good, and um, just you know the qualities. You know, he, he's good with his grading, and uh, you know he's quick to respond. A messenger. I don't. He seems really busy. I don't know how he has time for all this, but uh, anyways. So I got all these from him. Just no specific order. Just what we're listening to right now is. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this, but this is Kwame Nkrumah. It's called the Ninth Sun. As you can see, it's like Afro-Cuban, maybe Afro-Cuban jazz, maybe. But it's just, I've been running a little African kick lately. Um, it just fascinates me, the music. Um, I, I just really like it. So this one is actually on uh, Columbia. It's a two-eye pressing. Um, and it's really not terribly expensive, so if you kind of like it, and uh, you know, some of the African records can get pretty expensive, but uh, I think this would be a nice start for someone to just get into it because this is, you know, from the U.S. U.S. pressing. So uh, next was uh, pretty cool. Um, I haven't seen this in a long time. This is from a concert in like 1991, I want to say. This is uh, Pantera, official live, 101 proof. Nice gatefold. Original pressing. I think this was released in 99, but I don't have a lot of Pantera, so this is nice because it's got all their, you know, it's a whole concert. So they got Walk and uh, Becoming, 
Cowboys from Hell, Cemetery Gates. I mean, strength, strength beyond strength. So, uh, very nice. Always trying to get Pantera. I really screwed up, and I did not get that box set. And now it goes for you know quite a bit of money. I think Amazon was selling it for like 80 bucks back in the day, and I can't believe I didn't buy it. Next, we got a little uh, folk, some Tim Buckley, a little promo copy of Sophronia. It's a nice, nice little album from him. I wouldn't say it's great, but uh, it's still a decent album. Kind of folky rock, more folk. Next one, got a little soul, Betty Carter, Round Midnight. I believe she just passed away too. I'm not positive on that. I thought I read something on that on the Atco label, but uh, yeah, just really nice, uh, really nice soul music from her. I don't have a lot of records by her, so this is I think this might be my first one, but I'll definitely be looking to pick some more up. So very cool. Next one also on the uh, Columbia label, little uh, little rock, Raven. It's like a, uh, I don't want to say blues rock, but 70s hard rock, you know, something like that. But this was a sealed copy, um, and so obviously sounds terrific. So, uh, yeah, Raven. Next one, I've uh, been wanting this one for a while, um, and he posted it up, and I mean, there must have been a ton of comments, and I got lucky, and I got it. So, this is The Cramps. Their first album, Song the Lord Taught Us. Um, after looking it up, it looks like it's a, it's from the same year, but I think it's a second pressing. Um, but still very cool. Lucky to have it. Uh, these go still quite a bit, so I was really, uh, really excited to get this. And uh, sounds terrific. Great shape, as you can see. So very, very nice. I think that's my second Cramps record. They don't, I don't come across them very often, especially here in Dallas. So. All right, also another one that, uh, my first one of this artist, but uh, Vandergraaff Generator. It's more like, you know, froggy um, rock. Nice promo copy. Uh, this one's called God Bluff. It's my first Vandergraaff Generator album. Um, not one I see all the time either, so uh, it was nice to, nice to pick this up. 1976 so this one when I bought it it was kind of a kind of a blind buy but then I listened to it on Discogs and I was like whew I'm bl glad I got that this is on the Enja label uh, which is uh, this one's a German pressing but I think Enja was out of Sweden not positive but maybe it was Ger no it was German I'm sorry I'm thinking of uh, Steeplechase there but uh this is John Stubblefield Bushman song. Um, has John Stubblefield, Jerry Allen, uh, Charnett Moffat, Victor Lewis, and uh, Mino Sinello. There's Mr. Stubblefield right there. Uh, just a terrific jazz album. I mean, it's. I was blown away. This is this is a really nice album. Um, kind of do a sample online and maybe pick one up, but uh, really really enjoyed that. I think that was from the 80s too. Yeah, 1986, so, you know, I wouldn't expect, you know, that to be. I mean, as you get later in jazz, the early 80s, um, I'm not a huge fan of that, you know, but uh, that one surprised me, I gotta say. Next one, Rashawn Roland Kirk. This is uh, Kirkatron. Also, another one that's uh, pretty enjoyable. This is from. I want to say late 70s, early 80s, maybe 77. Yeah, so uh, I kind of like his earlier stuff a little bit more, but uh, this is still a you know a good album from him. Uh, who else plays on here with him? Um, Walter Perkins on drums on a couple tracks. Um, Cornell Dupree plays guitar on a couple, so it's kind of a hodgepodge, but really nice. This one uh, was also, I'm not a blind buy, I mean, I never heard of these guys actually. I didn't even know, that, you know, he was in a band, but I'll show you in a second. This is a band called Carp, 70s rock music. Um, 
I don't want to say too much on the psych side, but you know, a little bit of, a little bit in there. But I don't know if you can see. What does that look like? If you guessed Gary Busey, you would be correct. Didn't even know he was in a band. So pretty, pretty neat just to have that, just for that kind of like, you know, Chevy Chase uh, in his band. So it's a nice, it's a nice rock record. It's nothing, I, I don't think special or anything, but uh, another impulse to the collection, Sonny Stitt and Paul Gonzalez, Salt and Peppa, original stereo. Yeah, original stereo pressing. There we go. Love that impulse label, never gets old. Yeah, just a nice little album here. Who else plays on it with them? Perdido, I think, plays on here. Hank Jones, Milt Hitton. So, yeah, very nice. A little Kudu Jazz. Idris Muhammad, Boogie to the Top. glare. I got the windows open here. Uh, Idris Muhammad, you know, very enjoyable. He's got some vocal tracks on here. Jeremy Steig, who played with Bill Evans on a couple albums, plays flute. Um, got a little harmonica. Um, there's quite a few people that play on here. There's probably about 10 to 12 people. Um, you know, gets a little electric. This is from 77, so nice album from him. Um, probably one of his better ones, I would have to say. So. Whew, this was a burner too, um, not one I see all the time. I tell you this milestone jazz label is, the more I hear stuff on it, especially Joe Henderson, but uh, this is a Gary Bart's NT, NTU troupe, uh, the Harlem Bush music. Incredible album. I think this is a second press because the, uh, the first label has like some yellow on it and stuff like that, but uh, I still never see, I never see this stuff. So that was awesome. The condition is terrific. Um, this album, man. It, just, you know, light elements of free jazz. You're not, I don't think it's crazy free jazz. So for those of you that don't think you would like it, but uh, Ron Carter, Junie Booth, um, Andy Bay, Harold White, Nat Bettis. Very, very nice. I will definitely be looking for more Gary Bartz. They're hard to come by, though. So next one. Rocky Erickson. This is the, uh, I think his first EP before, you know, the album was released. This is a French pressing. Obviously, Rocky Erickson from the uh, 13 Floor Elevators. Uh, very, very nice album. Really enjoy it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Rocky Erickson on vocals and guitar. This is from sometime in the 80s. But very cool. I don't, this is my first uh, solo Rocky Erickson. I have a repress of 13th Floor Elevators, but it's another big one right here. Jackie McLean, Destination Out. When he posted this, man, I jumped on this. The first mono press. Um, Rashawn Moncour the third, Bobby Hutcherson, Larry Ridley, and the great Roy Haynes. I mean, this is a killer album. Uh, one of my favorite Blue Notes probably I have now, so. Uh, thank you for that one, Alex. Cause, uh, some soul music. Uh, never heard these guys. This was a blind buy, but you know, a little bit of funk mixed in with it. The uh, Sensational Williams Brothers, Mama Prayed For Me. So it's got a little bit of gospel twinge to it, but uh, mostly just soul music. Very, very awesome. Uh, never even heard these guys before. They're out of uh, D.C., I think. Yeah, DC, uh, 1977. Look it up, listen to it, pretty cool. Metallica, not one I had. Um, is, that, is it one you really need? Probably not, but you know, I'm a pretty big Metallica fan, so I got all their studio albums and anything I can pick up from them is always kinda, kinda neat. Um, I can't even, this isn't even on Discogs, this is recorded in uh, Seattle. 1989, August 29th and 30th, 1989. So it's got uh, Harvester of Sorrow one and uh, Bread Fan. So kind of a probably a bootleg or something like that, but pretty pretty neat. Not one I see all the time. Uh, more uh, 70s rock. 
I'd never even heard these guys either. Um, kind of a blind buy, but Yellow Hand. Some nice 70s rock here. So, pretty nice. I think that's on Capitol from late 60s or early 70s. Another uh, blue note here, um, not a terribly expensive album. Uh, this is uh, the later one of 70, you know, three pressing, but this is Ornette Coleman. <coughs> Ornette Coleman Trio at the Golden Circle, Stockholm. This is volume one, the Black B label. Uh, let's see here, yeah, Ornette Coleman, David Eisenon, and Charles Moffat. Uh, obviously, Ornette Coleman, you know, where you're getting a little bit more on the free side. Which I'm starting to enjoy a lot more, so uh, this is a very, very nice album from him. Manu Dabongo, Electric Africa. Uh, I picked this up right after he passed away, actually. This is almost like the day after he passed. I think he posted this, so I did not have any from uh, Mr. Manu. And uh, it's nice, kind of, you know. It's, it's mid 80s, I think this was 86, so there's definitely more electric aspects, but it's still got the African, you know, flavors to it. So it's, uh, it's very nice. I enjoyed it. It's only got four songs on it, um, but they're, you know, pretty good length. They're all like 10 minutes each, I think. Uh, another cool one um, Fleetwood Mac, Mr. Wonderful. I guess it's kind of their their first album but not really I guess it's their second album but uh, it's on the Blue Horizon first UK stereo pressing uh, so that was nice this is back with uh, Peter Green of course opens up so it's a full you know full he, he kind of stands up like that you guys have all seen it I don't know what I'm showing you but uh, yeah blues rock um, Peter Green I love this I love both Fleetwood Max, to be honest with you, but um, the Peter Green side is just totally different, blues rock, and uh, very enjoyable, so that was cool to pick that up. I got another one coming from Alex in the part two video for that, so. Uh, another one I can never get enough of, Terry Reed River. Nice rock music, 70s on Atlantic. Um, I think the second album? This, well, he had his first titled album, trying to remember what order. I think this is his second or third album, but it's uh, a very, very good album. Uh, you know, I listened to this twice already. And it's, it's just really, really good. Uh, not terribly expensive. I mean, they're hard to find. I find Terry Reed albums, but I'm in Dallas, so unless it's country. Uh, Aqua Fragile, Mass Media Stars. It's rock music. I think these... I think this is from, yep, 1974. Um, obviously, uh, Italian. Pretty, pretty nice. Actually, I haven't even. I just listened to a sample online. I haven't listened to this one yet, so I'll have to get back to you on that one. Mingus Dynasty Reincarnation. That one uh, I see all the time. This is actually an Italian pressing uh, from Milan, early 80s. Very, very cool. I'm trying to see who played on here with them. Uh, Richard Williams, Jimmy Nepper, Roland Hanna, Ricky Ford, Reggie Johnson, and Kenny Washington. So, this is recorded in Italy, I believe, 1982. Uh, 1979, my bad, at the Village Gate. So, a lot of these. Uh, sessions weren't released in the US so pretty nice to have that always nice to add uh, vertigo to the collections Jade Warrior nice vertigo this is uh, released just some nice 70s rock pretty cool a lot of you guys know Jade Warrior so nice to have that Another one, I, you know, I see it all the time, but I just never pick it up. It's uh, Captain Beyond. Got a real nice, reasonably priced copy on Capricorn. 
more, uh, you know, you look at the cover and I don't know, I think it's a little bit cheesy, but it's kind of cool at the same time. It's got that kind of, you know, the eye thing going. But uh, yeah, nice rock music there. Eberhard Weber Colours, Little Movements. This is, you know, it's on ECM. Um, it's more leaning to the classical side, I want to say, uh, but still pretty enjoyable. It's not the full on like you know, you know the Mozart like you're in here, but it, I mean it's it's enjoyable. So ECM, check it out. Next one, uh, Power of Love, Hourglass. It's got the uh, poppy psyche thing going for him. Pretty nice. It's on Liberty. Pretty cool stuff. Next one on, this is why I, earlier I was talking about Steeplechase, they're out of Denmark. This is uh, Joe Bonner and Johnny Diani, Suburban Fantasies. Very, very good album. If you guys can get your hands on this on Steeplechase Records. Not terribly expensive. Also from the 80s, I believe, 83. But just a really, really nice, uh, nice album. Um, definitely jazz, but, you know, I think they play... He plays his bass with a string, I think, so kind of like uh, Richard Davis a little bit, you know. Um, very, very cool, so. And last but certainly not least, another one on the Milestone label, a group called Cassiopeia. I believe they were out of Japan. Uh, this is Zoom. This is definitely going to be Fusion, so for you Fusion people, uh, not an expensive album. And not one I'll probably listen to all the time. I'm not, you know, I'm still kind of touching the surface on the fusion, so um, very, very nice though. If you're into fusion, give this a listen. Cassiopeia, zoom. And that's it for part one. Um, as you can see, pretty eclectic mix. Not all just jazz, kind of a little bit of everything, which I like about Alex. You know, he posts pretty much everything. Got some great stuff coming from him still. Looking forward to that for part two video. And, uh, yeah, hope everyone's doing well. Um, been watching everybody's videos. I'm so bad at commenting. Um, what are you going to do? I'm bad at texting, bad at commenting. It's my life. But, uh, yeah, so everything's been going good here pretty much. Uh, just doing home projects and uh, working. So I'm essential worker, so I still got to go to work, unfortunately. Well, fortunate but unfortunate, I guess. So. Anyways, I uh, hope everyone's doing well, and uh, yeah, I'll watch your videos, and uh, talk to you guys later.